Hi, I'm Mark Andrew from Sketchcamp.io and in this short video course for NetMag, I'll be showing you how to prototype your designs inside of Flinto. Let's make a start. If you haven't already, download and install a copy of both Sketch and Flinto. They both have generous trial periods to fully explore both applications. After opening up Flinto, you'll be presented with a splash screen where you can go ahead and click on New Document. Set the device type to iPhone 6 with a pixel density at 2x and click Create. Don't forget to also install the Sketch plugin which we'll use to export our designs from Sketch with. You can quickly grab this by choosing Flinto Install Sketch Plugin from the menu bar. We won't be needing the screen that's just been created as we're inputting on our screens from Sketch so simply delete it either by pressing the delete key or right clicking on the screen and choosing delete. Remember to quickly save the new document and give it a name for the Sketch plugin to reference very shortly. Something like PhotoShare would be perfect. Jump on over to Sketch and make sure you have a copy of the Sketch tutorial file open. Choose Plugins Center Flinto from the menu bar and from the pop-up window set the scale to 200% and click send. Then in the next window check that the Flinto file you saved earlier is selected and click merge. Back in Flinto you will see your screens have now been imported into the application and their layer hierarchy has been preserved from your sketch file. From the menu bar choose view center canvas and use the shortcut command plus plus or command plus minus so all of your screens are visible and centered on the canvas. Make sure you also select the first screen share photo and then from the screen properties panel on the right set it as the home screen. Let's begin by creating a transition between the two screens where a user clicks on the Instagram link on the first screen, share photo, and the modal window on the second screen, share modal, appears. Now you could simply select the Instagram bitmap in the layer list on the left, and then press F to create a link. But when we're working with smaller elements like this, I'm all for giving the end user a much larger tap area. So place your cursor over the Instagram icon and press D to draw out a link. Then take the link line across to the share modal screen, and from the window that pops up, choose new transition. We're now inside the key feature of Flinto, the transition designer, where the really good stuff takes place. It's a powerful beast and the precise control you have over each layer enables you to create some very complex transitions and in turn some very high fidelity prototypes. Select the end screen, it's the one highlighted with a red border, and holding shift place it over the start screen until it snaps into place. Also take note of the transition preview control at the top of the canvas which highlights when you're at the start or the end of a transition, a very handy feature. With the end screen still selected, reduce the opacity of the overlay layer all the way down to zero. And then use command click to select both instances of the share panel group in the layer list. The connect layers option will now become available in the toolbar. Click this and you'll see the two groups highlighted with a link icon to show you that they're now connected. Then from the connected layer panel, change the behavior to crossfade. With a quick press of the spacebar, you'll now see a simple transition between the two screens. Not really much to see yet, but we're on the right track. Also try holding shift whilst pressing the spacebar to see your transitions in slow motion. Very helpful for when you're trying to fine tune a transition and you want to make sure you're not missing any subtle details that may be happening within your prototype. Now, if you're wondering how Connect Layers works, let me give you a brief overview. Flinto doesn't keep track of layers between screens automatically. This can be surprising at first, but it allows more flexibility and allows a big reduction in the complexity of your prototypes. With connect layers, you can indicate that two layers from different screens are connected in a transition and they will automatically be animated. Now, for the modal reveal, we could go something as simple as a quick fade in by tweaking the opacity, but that's a little dull, don't you think? How about a 3D rotation? Yeah, I think that's a great idea too. With the modal group selected, change its rotation to 90 on the x-axis and reduce its opacity down to zero. Select Spring UI Kit from the timing panel and reduce the damping to around 0.7 so the effect is a little more noticeable. Just subtle and visual improvements make all the difference to the user experience. Hit that trusty space bar to see our transition in action. Now give your transition a suitable name and click save and exit to jump back to the main canvas area.
Let's create a new link that will reverse our previous transition and close the modal window. And we can do that by simply drawing a link around the close icon on the share modal screen. Drag the link line back across the share photo screen. And then from the window that pops up, choose the transition you created. Then click on the reverse transition icon at the bottom left of the window. And finally, the share button of our modal, which will also link back to the share photo screen. But we want to go with a slightly different transition this time for when our photo has been shared. So press D to create a link around the share button. Take the link line across to the share photo screen and choose new transition. Now we could leave the screens in the layer list as they are. Share modal as the start screen and share photo as the end screen. But as we're just dealing with the modal screen here, keeping to that method just creates more work for ourselves. So let me show you a better way. Select the share modal screen in the layer list and drag it to the top so it now sits above the share photo screen. And in the editor window, drag the end screen behind the start screen until it snaps into place. Press the space bar to go to the end of the transition and reduce the opacity of the overlay layer to zero. Connect the share panel groups on both screens as aside from the overlay which we just adjusted. This is the only other element that will change states between screens. For the modal, and with us still at the end of our transition, hold shift to keep our modal element aligned on its vertical axis and drag it up and out of the screen area. Take the opacity down to zero so our modal will fade out as it leaves the top of the screen and give this new transition a suitable name and click save and exit. We now have one more addition for our final screen before we wrap things up. Let's attach a sound to our share button. This just adds an extra layer of realism to the prototypes you create with Flinto. Now you don't need to attach Beethoven's Third Symphony to this interaction, just a simple, short sound effect is all that's needed. So with the share button link selected, tap on the speaker icon in the gesture panel on the right and select the Woosh MP3 file from the tutorial folder to add the sound to your interaction. It's really that simple. Before we wrap things up here, use the shortcut Command P to bring up the preview window and give your prototype a quick run through. Looks and sounds good, right? Remember the shortcut I just mentioned? You'll be using it a lot when working on future projects in Flinto. Now hopefully you can appreciate what a powerful tool Flinto is and how well it works alongside Sketch. Having knowledge of the prototyping stages of a project enables you to have a much more informed and strengthened position throughout the process, which I feel gives you a much stronger affinity to the work that you initially create inside of Sketch. Go forth and prototype. Thanks for watching the video.